So we get asked these type of questions about buying used dirt bikes, and that's what this video is about, what to look out for when buying a used dirt bike, motocross bike specifically. Um, and maybe we'll catch most things, maybe we'll miss a few. Feel free to leave a comment and, and ask if there's something that we missed or something specific with a specific bike you have a question about. But we're going to just go over this and hit some of the hot spots, what you want to watch out for, because we see it all the time. People miss very big red flags when buying used bikes, and it ends up being very expensive. These bikes are high maintenance, the parts don't last long, they're expensive and complex. So at least, even if you use this as a negotiation point when buying a bike, you should just be aware of some things to look out for. So we'll just kind of go over those and uh, go from there. Here's one that most people are aware of, um, fork seals. This is a great example here because the oil is literally just seeping out of these fork seals. Um, if you want to give it, if, it, if you don't have one so obvious and severe, you can just grab the front brake, pump the forks a couple times, and then come around and look where the travel stops and see if you see a little residue. A uh, severe case like this, it's just running out, so that's pretty obvious. And if you have very leaky fork seals, you know, just go ahead and look and see is it contaminated the brake pads, because um, that's going to be another issue that will have to be addressed. Walk around and check your wheel bearings. This test is the same for the front and the rear. Pick a point to steady the machine, put another hand on the wheel, and rock the wheel back and forth and check for free play. And you'll feel it, and one, this one really needs wheel bearings, you'll actually hear it clunking back and forth. So, any free play at all, and really spin it, you can actually feel these two are kind of rough as the wheel turns, so that'll need, that'll need wheel bearings factored in. So, here's a big one to look for, the body work. This is only plastic, it's only cosmetic, but it can be a pretty good indicator of machine health or how it's cared for. So the first thing, this is 2020 now. This is a 2013 YZ250F. It still has the factory bodywork, the factory stickers, and all the nice factory fasteners still holding this on. So that, that kind of is a true indicator of the wear of this machine. A few little scuffs and scratches, normal wear and tear, no big deal. Um, when you see a machine with shiny new plastic bolted onto it, beware. It's very easy to go get a plastic kit bolted on, really make the machine look really pretty from a few feet back, but the expensive stuff you want to watch out for has nothing to do with the bodywork, so don't be distracted with the shiny new bodywork. Another indicator in bodywork that you want to watch out for, what do the fasteners look like? Like I mentioned, these are all factory fasteners. They're correct for this machine. Does it have, does the machine you're looking at have some screws, some bolts, some metrics, some standard, a mix match of everything? You know, the person that did that probably didn't care for the rest of the machine much better. So mismatched fasteners are a big, big thing to watch out for um, when you're looking around your machine. The chain and sprockets are a highly abused and neglected and wearable item on these type of bikes, so be sure to check that out. You want to check for the chain just being wore out with excessive free play, the sprocket teeth being broken, worn to a sharp peak, missing altogether. If the chain and sprockets appear okay, take a look down at the adjustment portion. This one is all the way up here you have full adjustment lift and so that's an indicator you know it's, it's got some life lift if it's all the way out at the end even if the chain sprockets don't look that bad well you don't have any adjustment lift so check on that the adjustment availability next commonly overlooked the chain guides there's a chain guide here there's a chain guide down here and there's an upper and lower chain roller here so this one specifically if this gets worn out and not replaced which usually happens chain and sprockets get put on this gets neglected you move up around here closer to the swing arm pivot and i've seen these wear 
all the way through to they're cutting into the swing arm and damaging that. So keep an eye out for that. And your front sprocket as well, where similar to the rear sprocket. Now, if all that checks out, something that gets overlooked a lot, check up here by the counter shaft again and look for any damage. A lot of bikes, the chain's so neglected, it flew off at some point in its life. It's cracked or damaged engine cases or there's some type of repair on here done. So keep an eye out for that. It'll be some kind of looks like somebody stuck gray bubble gum or something on the engine cases or it's just cracked all together from a previous chain derailment. Give your shock absorber a quick look. These don't leak as commonly as uh, fork seals do, but you're just going to look at the shaft here. Similar to the fork seals, if you see oil seeping out or it's all wet around here, that's an indicator that the shock seal is leaking. And you can also give a quick look down here to the bumper and just see if it's there, you know, just so you know it's, if it's deteriorated or the chunk's missing or, or whatever. Just, just give that a quick look. Similar to what we did with the wheel bearings, you can grasp the swing arm kind of give it a wiggle move it around check for what you're really looking for is there any free play and the farther back you grab it the more leverage you'll have because the free play you're checking for will be up here around your swing arm pivot area where that bolt goes through the engine that would indicate you have you know worn out needle bearings so that's something to check down here on your linkage you can't get too thorough but you could kind of give that a little wiggle a look and just see and some of this you know, if, if the bike's on the ground and you bounce it up and down, you put your hand on the seat and kind of just push the suspension up and down, you can feel some of the problems too. But just put an eye on it, put a hand on it, and just kind of give it an inspection too. So moving around to your brakes, which you should definitely look at, you want to check obviously your brake pads, see if they have plenty of wear on them. Is it down? A lot of people, believe it or not, will run these pads down where they're metal on metal. They've destroyed the rotor. So even if you see thick, shiny new brake pads, look at the rotor too, because usually the guy that runs it down to metal on metal, um, he'll just throw new pads in there and uh, right back on that old rotor and it just won't ever have the same friction and braking power. Um, the other thing you wanna check for, you can spin the wheel and you might feel a tight spot and then a loose spot indicating a warped rotor or if you're riding the machine whether it's the brake pedal or the brake lever when you apply the brakes you'll feel a pulsating in the lever and that'll a sure sign that your rotor is warped and then when these machines have been ran really hard if you spin around and look at it every now and then you'll see one that's actually has a crack in the rotor so of course all that you you know you'll need to get some parts and you need to replace your brake pads and rotors is a set if you're going all new components and your rotor's been destroyed but if your rotor's good you know just pads but definitely a definitely a hot spot to check for going over the controls and cables some stuff you want to look out for uh, bent handlebars bent handlebar mounts broken levers broken perches damaged or frayed cables, smooth action of cables, um, check the adjuster to see if they're there, if they're missing, broken, cracked. The throttle housings are, are very common for somebody to take a spill, break those and crack them and usually you have to replace the whole cable set. And brake fluid leaks up here and you know you can give the brake lever even a squeeze, check for a nice firm, firm brake lever there and uh, give all that stuff a good look over. So depending on the person you're dealing with, if they're pretty cool and relaxed, they probably won't mind to pop out two bolts and take off the seat just to, just to take a look at the air box. So and what you really want to look, you know, it's okay if it's, if it's dirty or whatever. The main thing is, is the foam deteriorated? Is there a hole indicating this has been sucking in unfiltered air and dust and dirt into the engine um, like I've seen before? Is there even an air filter there at all? I've seen them missing completely. And is it installed and kind of seated properly on the air filter cage and bolted in? Just a, it's kind of a quick look in two bolts. Uh, because if, if your air filter's got issues, then 
uh, there could be some internal engine damage to think about. So moving on to the engine, which is where you could potentially run into the greatest cost or trouble um, with your used machine. And if we're talking like this is a four stroke, you run the risk of much more expensive repair and maintenance, mostly from the cylinder and cylinder head especially up. This compared to your two stroke bikes where the top end of your engine is much simpler, much cheaper to rebuild. So. That being said, some things to really watch out for. Does the engine start easily? Does the engine idle okay? Does the engine rev up and, and run okay? As some common things. If the engine doesn't, it's hard to start. If it has to be bump started, you pretty much can guarantee it has low compression and it's going to need a full top end rebuild. And if it's a four stroke like this, that can get really expensive. And some two strokes, in fairness, are set up to where they don't idle. So if it runs great, don't let that be a deal breaker. You know, it's just some carburetor settings for personal preference. So when your engine is running, if it does run, um, check and see if it smokes. Do you have any erratic or loud noises coming from the engine? These are four strokes. They're you know they're not totally quiet by any means. But if you hear a knocking or a rattling, you know, just some things to be aware of. So beyond all that, if it runs good, sounds good, whatever, you can check around for some stuff while you're riding it. Does the clutch slip? Does it, does it creep? Indicating, you know, clutch wear damage. So when you have the clutch pulled in, does the machine want to creep forward? So that means something's, the plates are got hot, warped, doesn't fully disengage. If it slips, you know, either way you're looking at new clutch plates at a minimum. Um, common oil leaks on the counter shaft seal and the shift shaft seals um, you can definitely see oil seeping out of there those are pretty cheap relatively easy to fix but just something else to to be aware of to look at and a big one that people overlook frequently that surprises me if you if you can which usually you can take a look down underneath of the engine at the oil drain plugs it's very common for them to be stripped out and if they've been stripped sometimes you can really tell it's got the wrong bolt in there, there's a crack, there's some kind of crazy aluminum weld or something going on there, some kind of repair. Um, or it looks normal, but there's just a little seepage of oil around there. It's kind of an indicator, and these they are very common. It can be repaired, but just something you want to be aware of. And it's down on the bottom, so people tend to forget. But take a quick look down there and, and check your drain plug. So if you're dealing with a carbureted motor cross bike, look at the carburetor, you know, maybe around the seam for the float bowl or like this one, it's kind of wet here around this main jet access or the, the drain, whatever you want to call it here. Um, so that fuel leak is probably not going to get better over time, you know, and it's probably just an O-ring, but it's just something to be aware of. The internal thing to check for on this is while you're checking the machine out and maybe it's been ran, it's parked, look down at the drain hose which starts here on the carburetor and ends up down here under the machine. The float needles will wear or will get debris stuck in them and when the machine's sitting here just barely tilted to one side, it may come, it may go, but they'll seep fuel out of this. And same thing, sooner or later it's going to stick either open or closed and it's going to overflow. So you'll have to go in there and replace that float needle and that's very common on carbureted machines. So all the things that we have went over here, you know, certainly there's probably some stuff we've missed. You can't catch everything. Some people are harder or easier to deal with. Some of this stuff, you may not even want to mention it. You may want to just keep it to yourself just so you're aware of what's going on. Some things you may feel you can use as a negotiation point for price, but the bottom line is these these motocross bikes are high performance machines so everything may completely check out you know and you still may have a problem they none of them last that long they all have extremely wearable items so you know just that just is the way it is but if you kind of give a quick look around of the things we described you at least get an idea cuz a little a few things to fix here and there no big deal but all these little things they add up and a lot of the bikes if you get to the engine part of this 
and you're failing some of your engine tests and you have a rough engine, well, chances are a lot of the rest of the machine around there is rough. So as all these things add up together, that's when you kind of get to the point that you know maybe maybe you want to move on to the next machine or maybe you're going to pay a really low price and have a really fun project to work on. So like I said before, if you have questions about it, feel free to leave a comment or ask us, contact us through the website. I'd be glad to help try to point you in the right direction. And when it comes time to work on the machine, same thing, let us know. Obviously we have manuals, we have tech support, and the whole point here is to help people and spend you know, time, time in the shop and time on the bike.